today's program, ICEJ Jerusalem President Dr. Jurgen Bueller and the leadership of ICEJ Jerusalem give an exciting year-end review of 2021 successes. ICEJ Canada Executive Director Donna Holbrook, Pastor Tech Yu, and Rabbi Shmuel Bowman reminisce over 10 years of Christian Jewish friendship and cooperation. ICEJ USA Director Dr. Susan Michael shares her testimony of involvement with the International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem. Two thousand and twenty-one was an amazing year for the International Christian Embassy right here in Jerusalem. Thanks to the help from you and many other Christians from around the world, we could impact the nation of Israel, the very city of Jerusalem, in an even greater way than last year. Please have a look to what the Lord did through us in 2021. 2021 has been a great year in ICEJ aid. At the Haifa home, we've been able to upgrade the shared living space and physiotherapy room. We've also installed an elevator in the new building and we're just about to begin taking in new residents. Also, we've expanded our outreach to survivors outside the home through a call center. Already, that call center receives 2,800 calls a month. Another milestone in 2021 was when we delivered our 150th shelter to protect vulnerable communities. 42 of those were ordered just this year, and that number continues to climb. We're also really excited that we were able to help strengthen many more families through food packages, home repairs, vocational training, or scholarships that help them towards a brighter future. I want to thank you for helping us make 2021 an amazing year. This year, ICEJ helped more than 3,000 immigrants return to their biblical homeland. We've reached the total of over 163,000 during the history of ICEJ. And while many people are shutting down because of COVID, we've had two amazing years of a virtual Feast of Tabernacles. This last Feast of Tabernacles, we had almost 5,000 participants from over 100 nations. While the world's shutting down because of COVID, God has given ICEJ the grace to flourish and do more and be more. So let's celebrate together an amazing 2021. In our international work over the last year, we experienced a paradox because normally we would travel a lot, but we couldn't do that because of the lockdowns and the travel restrictions. And yet we have seen a great improvement of communication, both in quality and quantity. In these online meetings, we were able to have good communication with uh, many offices which we have around the world, and some new people joined us. So we were able to start new offices in several countries of Latin America, Eastern Europe, and Africa. Many other people joined us for our numerous prayer initiatives, uh, starting with the weekly global prayer gatherings and also these amazing prayer chains at the beginning of each Hebrew month, the Rosh Chodesh. The Lord has used this crisis to raise awareness about His plan for Israel and for the nations. And we are so grateful that we can be part of that. Another important moment for our ministry came in May when Israel faced its fourth rocket war with Hamas in Gaza in the past 12 years. There were hundreds of rockets flying every day into Israel where the security threat is growing. So it's more than 150 bomb shelters that were now helping Israel protect itself. We were also giving firefighting equipment and uh, fire protection suits to the first responders to help them protect their communities. So the Christian Embassy is doing all these things to help Israel keep safe. We had a great impact this year in Israel. And together, we can do so much more in the future. We are so grateful for your support, for your generous donations to the ICJ that has 
made it possible for us to increase our work at the ICJ. Our Alia work, our Holocaust survivor work, bomb shelters, and educating the church, connecting you to Israel, informing you what is happening right here in Israel, but also from a biblical perspective. So thank you once again for your great support. We are very thankful for that. And may God do great things for you also. So you have seen what we have been doing in 2021 here in Israel and also right here in the city of Jerusalem. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support, for standing with us in prayer, in your finances, and also in your support in your country. And I want to wish you the blessing of the Lord as you are standing with Israel and as you are blessing God's chosen people. I do ask you to prayerfully consider also to stand in 2022 on the side of the International Christian Embassy, your embassy right here in the land of Israel. in prayer because prayer changes things and people we are living in the last days before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit you can speak the word of God with boldness no one can stop you no one can stand in front of you no one can stand in your way because you will have victory in Jesus you will have power the power of God and no one can stop you hi everyone this is Jude Hodson with ICEJ Canada and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about the Word from Jerusalem. It's our very special bi-monthly magazine that comes directly from Jerusalem. You can have it sent to your home or you can view it online. All you need to do is just to go to icej.ca and take a look there if you want to look at it online or call us. Our phone number is 1-866-324-9133. Again, that's ICEJ Canada. For the word from Jerusalem. Up next, ICEJ Canada Executive Director Donna Holbrook, Pastor Tech Yu, and Rabbi Shmuel Bowman reminisce over 10 years of Christian Jewish friendship and cooperation. Well, welcome everyone. I have special guests here and friends. Actually, they're friends. Uh, we have Pastor Tech pastor of the Friends of Jesus Christ, a Filipino church in Scarborough, Toronto. Also our board member mm -hmm. on the ICJ Canada board. And also Rabbi Shmuel Bowman from a frat Israel, Toronto born, I like mm -hmm. to say. And we have a relationship here. There's, there's a real camaraderie between mm -hmm. us all. And I'd like to share just a little comments about this. And I know Pastor Tech and I met back in, not here, but in Jerusalem, <laughs> Jerusalem yes. I had a Canadian flag and they saw it and they came over and we became fast friends. And they've been doing Israel rejoicing for over 20 years in a Jewish park here in Toronto, all free for the community at Earl Bell's Park, mm -hmm. the third Sunday of August when things are under normal schedule. Mm -hmm. And then um, Rabbi Bowman with the uh, Operation Life Shield for... Uh, since 2006 and even before then during the Feast of Tabernacles so we go back a long way and we have Israel in our hearts and we bring what we know from Israel back to Canada so just carry on well, well our friendship goes beyond uh, I think we have more than a decade yes. and uh, you know I cherish those moments when Rabbi would come to our church when it was in the basement. In the basement still. <laughs> so that's a long time ago. That's a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, and you brought your sister. Yeah. Minda. Yes. Minda. Yes. Yeah. Blessed memory. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. And even uh, Yoav. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Yoav, Yoav was yeah. a silly yeah. young boy. Yes, then. yes. Yeah, yeah it, it goes back to those days. And uh, we traced those moments where from the airport, direct go to our church, attend the service, and go home. 
<laughs> and sometimes the last stop would be our church and then to the airport. Yeah, I, was, it's, I, I just always felt that it was, uh, um, I think this is family. I mean, I'm going to go beyond friends. I really yeah. feel that this is a family mm -hmm. reunion. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you arrive in a place? I mean, you, you know, I'm coming from Israel. It's mm -hmm. true. It was always in my heart. First stop is, has to be uh, the, uh, the FOJC or the last stop on my way, mm -hmm. on my way out. And I think in one time I actually came to the, uh, to the church and I still had, I had dust yeah. <laughs> yes. from the land of Israel on my shoes or something. <laughs> and it just, I had it in my heart just to say, I'm just going to like, here we go. Dust from the land of Israel. Just right before I go home and go, before I go and change, I'm just going to put the, um, but that's, that's really what this has been about. And then the other thing is when you come to Israel. That's right. Yes. And you come to Israel and there you are, beautiful smile. And you're there with, with, uh, your congregation and you you just bring that joy to the land mm -hmm. and it's uh it's it's always it's always so wonderful so yeah uh, and we miss it for the last two years so yeah yeah, yeah. hopefully next year donna yeah. i hope so i hope so <laughs> we keep running into each other all the time and yeah. it's just fantastic yeah. i'm so grateful and mm -hmm. and and i have to also just say that, that, that um, my family and i are just so grateful for the outpouring of warmth and love when my beloved sister Minda uh, mm -hmm. parted mm -hmm. from us and mm -hmm. and and uh, and you were with us uh, yeah. during all that yeah. and during the I really really the appreciate sitting that. Shiva so that's family that's yeah. what family does that's and we it. also dedicated a, a bomb shelter that's right. in Minda's name that's right in, yeah. in Minda's name yeah yeah, yeah. and there's yeah. a beautiful yeah. piece of artwork with that too that's right that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, her niece uh, did yeah, exactly. and that's in yeah. Rosh Pina Rosh in, Pina. in northern Israel, on the northern border, mm -hmm. and that provides shelter. Actually, that's right across. It's interesting. That's actually right beside a art, uh, arts and crafts uh, program for seniors. Oh, oh good. So it actually provides. Good. Yeah, so it's kind that's of good. makes. Yeah. It's very poetic. Yeah. yeah. Well, so how's Israel this time? Um, Israel, Israel is good. Uh, we were strong. Um, we're, you know, we came out of a very uh, out of a war in May, um, which we're still feeling the effects of. Yeah. Um, but we know we're not alone. We know we have friends all over the world mm -hmm. who stand with us, mm -hmm. and that gives us great strength. Um, unfortunately, we're waiting for the next war. I, 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 I don't want to be the. I don't want to be negative or anything, mm -hmm. but our. Um, our, you know, Israeli army intelligence has warned that things are heating up on the north, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, we're concerned a bit about Iran. We're watching Iran very, very carefully. Oh, so yeah. it's not like we can let our guard down. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's what we have to do. Yep. Yeah. So. Well, you know, in, in your ministry, we are blessed. Like uh, you gave us the opportunity to practically help the people. Mm -hmm. See, you know, sometimes we hear about bombing and those things, how we wish that we could do something. Mm -hmm. And so your ministry allowed us to do something. Not, not a big way, but still. It's, it's tangible. It's, it's tangible. Very tangible. Yeah. It's very tangible. Yeah. And, and it's so a, important. Yeah. And, and it's this partnership. Um, yes. I think it's one of, the, one of the most interesting things uh, that I see is, is when I go and visit the shelters. Mm -hmm. And there's the dedication plaque. And it talks about, you know, Canada. Yeah. And for Israelis, so they look at that and they go, oh, there are, there are people in Canada who, mm -hmm. who love us. Yeah. There are people in Canada who actually care about us. Yeah. And, That's right. and That's that, right. is, uh, that, that really is, is a shock. Yeah. Mm. And if I'm there when that, when, when, and I can meet with people, I, be, I, I get an opportunity to, ex, to explain and talk yeah. about what this relationship is. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Personally, I think that's a sanctification of God's name. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. when we're able to talk about this relationship, um, our Father in Heaven is smiling down. He wants oh, His children yeah. to be Amen. to play well together, mm -hmm. and and I think it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we're building those bridges together, absolutely, right? Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. And we'll continue to do that and look forward to it to our continued friendship as a family. Oh. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Up next. ICEJ USA Director Dr. Susan Michael shares her involvement with ICEJ Jerusalem. Welcome to Inside Israel with ICJ Canada. Today I have a very special guest with me in studio, 
Dr. Susan Michael, the executive director of the American branch of the ICE Day. Dr. Susan, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Adam, it's my pleasure and my blessing to be with you today and speak to your audience there in Canada. Yes, it's, it's a joy. Um, and we're going to get into God's word today, but truly, um, our, our two branches together, we're a big family, a big family uh, all across the globe. But particularly since we're neighbors, we work very closely with our friends down south. So Dr. Susan, we're going to get into the mandate of the ICJ today in God's word. How long have you been with the ministry? Forever. <laughs> That's my answer to that. I'm one of the few that actually am still around and was there the day the ministry opened their doors in Jerusalem in 1980. And uh, I, yes, I was very, very young then. Well, well I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but had just arrived after graduating from college to begin a master's degree there in Jerusalem in Judeo-Christian studies. And the director of my school became the chairman of the board of this new organization and a fellow student at the school became the financial director. And I was just there the first day. We had a little prayer group. We prayed for the birthing of the ministry, not from the vision perspective, but from the internal, the financial and administrative inner workings of it. So I've been around a long time and I'm I'm so proud, and it's such a privilege to have been a part of this organization. Uh, it's such a unique and cutting-edge ministry, and uh, it's been a, a real joy to be a part of it all these years. Oh, it truly is, Susan. It truly is. You know, it's amazing to see the progression of the ministry uh, over over 40 years, and uh, what a what a testimony it is that you were able to see it all happen. And we'll get into that on another show. Um, but I'd, I'd like to discuss a scripture. And, and this was a scripture that was kind of the cornerstone of our ministry right from the beginning. Isaiah chapter 40, the comfort, comfort my people, nechamu, nechamu ami. Um, and I, I know it's been a rock for us. It's kind of been our rudder that's got us through and, and, and push the ministry forward in our love and stand with Israel. How can Canadian um, believers, uh, how can we implement that? How can we really uh, take hold of what that scripture verse is saying? Yes, well, you know, and I assume that most of your listeners know about the birth of the ICEJ and how it all got started, but there may be a couple in the audience. I'll just uh, briefly mention that, of course, our birth was based on the political issue of Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. And even our name has a little bit of a political ring to it, an, an international Christian embassy in Jerusalem. But from day one, as you rightly said, our mission statement was not political at all. It was right out of the pages of scripture. And it was this verse, Isaiah 40, verse 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, says the Lord. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. And the reason for that is the founders of our organization understood that it was a whole new season that God was doing here and on different levels. So let's talk about just the level of a Christian organization being born in support of Israel. Our founders knew that for fifth, over 1,500 years, there had been such terrible relations between Jews and Christians. And here the Christian world had not only persecuted Jewish people, we had actually taught contempt of the Jewish people. And there was great, great animosity uh, between Jews and Christians. And here, the newborn state of Israel was only, what, 32 years old, I think, at the, at the time. From inside this brand new Jewish state were Christians coming forward and saying, no, we love you, we support you, we stand with you, and we speak words of comfort, and we're going to do acts of comfort. And so how do you show support and love for the Jewish people? But you have to do it in very practical ways. And so from day one, we began just doing humanitarian helps and aids and helping the needy and, and just being there to help however we could. And of course, over the years, 
any practical way that we could help Israel, we would. And right. that involves all the projects. I'm sure you all have talked about them, but Aliyah, uh, the bomb shelters, buying fire equipment, um, oh, you know, wow. working in partnership with Yad Vashem. All these are just practical ways that we as Christians showed and put, portrayed a voice of love and support and comfort to the Jewish people. Oh, you're absolutely right. Uh, and it's amazing how uh, Israeli society has been impacted through this ministry. Uh, was it not even right from our very first feast, the very first celebration of the, of the Feast of Tabernacles that we had, uh, the prime minister show up? And since then, this continual support from so the Israeli society, uh, and it's truly made that impact. Let's talk a little bit about that, Susan. Yes, over the years, the Feast of Tabernacles, we've had um, every single prime minister of Israel, except for one, actually came to the uh, feast, uh, greeted the crowd. In later years, they tended to send video greetings. Uh, security became much more complicated. But um, yes, we for many years, the Israeli government referred to us as the only embassy in Jerusalem, and they really rep appreciated that we did have somewhat of a representative role. We weren't a full diplomatic embassy representing a country, but we did represent tens of millions of Christians all around the world, and we provided a bridge in both directions, a bridge for all those Christians around the world to demonstrate their support of Israel. And then secondly, is to be able to then educate those Christians around the world and assist the Israeli government or Israeli institutions as they wanted to work with these Christians and engage them. So we've been this bridge of relationship um, all, all those years. And um, our, we've really developed quite an expertise because we're there on the ground in Israel. We're not just talking about support of Israel. We're doing it every day and we are building a relationship with the Jewish people that is absolutely historic. Absolutely, yes, it's historical and biblical. And, and friends, listen, if this is the first time you're hearing about this amazing story and the mandate and the call of our ministry, I encourage you, if you're here watching from Canada, check us out at icej.ca and you can see how we're actually making that impact as Susan was talking about with the, the, the Ministry of Help and Comfort as believers in the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. And uh, Susan, you know, is there any last words uh, that you can impart to us as, as biblical Zionists, as believers in, in Jesus, uh, as we're continuing this ministry of comfort to the Jewish people? Yes, because Isaiah 40 goes on to talk about preparing the way for the Lord. And so this really is a very prophetic a ministry born for such a time as this, for this time in history and this time in what God is doing with the Jewish people. And we really are preparing the way for the coming of the Lord as, a, as that voice calling out in the wilderness. And uh, sometimes we feel like we're a voice calling out in the wilderness and out in the nations and with things that are going on today and the rise of anti-Semitism. But that is part of our calling, to be that prophetic voice to the nations and to build a relationship and a highway that is preparing the way for the coming king. Now, it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> amen. Amen, Dr. Susan. We're, we're really living in prophetic and exciting days. Dr. Susan, thank you so much for joining us today in studio. Uh, friends, God bless you. Thank you for joining. And we will have Susan back with us soon. Hi, I'm Donna Holbrook, a National Executive Director of the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem, Canada. Audrey Ruth Peer was one of our members who came to know about the work of the ICJ in bringing comfort here. And she passed away as an only child and with no children of her own. She had two regrets in her life. One was that she didn't have children and the other one that she never came to the land of Israel. So when she passed away, 
She left an estate. I shared it with her friend, Pat, who knew her for over 60 years. And I said, Pat, what do you think Audrey would like? How we use her funds. So music was important to her. Children also important to her. And so we undertook the fun and we divided it four ways equally. And it went to a petting zoo for children, for orphan boys near Tel Aviv. It also went to build two new music rooms at Bet Yosef up at Haifa, which is a very large community center. We also helped to complete a playground for another orphanage to the south of Israel. And then it enabled us to restore our scholarship for Christian young adults. And even though she was never in Israel, her name is in the land on those three projects and it continued for five years on our Canadian scholarship for Christian leaders who have never been to Israel who are in the age group of 17 to 30. Would you consider being a Shomer, Keep of Israel, in your state giving? And that, that leaves a wonderful legacy here in Israel. Thank you for joining us today. And be sure to visit our website at www.icej.ca or call us at 1-866-324-9133. And for our Canadian residents, be sure to ask for your free Canada-Israel pin. Through your contributions to ICEJ Canada, you can participate by giving to Haifa Home for Holocaust Survivors, Women at Risk Red Carpet Project, Operation Life Shield Bomb Proof Shelters, Mentoring Programs, Aliyah Support, Children's Projects, Israel in Crisis, Israel Aid, the Gan David Adam Emergency Services, Christian Friends of Yad Vashem, Scholarships for Young Adult Leaders, ICEJ Canada Media Fund, Gift Estate Securities Fund.